So welcome guys. You guys should all know my name by now. Goes and I go with Goals Trade most of my so socials. Thank you guys for coming to this webinar. I'm going to be pretty giving pretty much giving you guys a basic rundown of my trading style. Um, and then some more kind of the advanced parts I'm going to kind of get into, but mostly I want you guys to be able to chart. And so when you do see me posting my charts are on X, you guys are able to identify why I'm looking at that specific area where I got it. And then after that, be able to do this. The game plan is to make sure you guys can do this on your own without me. So that'll probably be the best reward seeing you guys not need me at the end of this. So Let's get right into it. This is a basic slide. Um, it involves buying and selling. You guys pretty much know all this option, but this part in, at the end, I do want you guys to kind of pay attention to and really understand it. So options trading requires an understanding of factors like the implied volatility, time decay, and the strike prices. This statement couldn't be any more truer than everything in options. If you're investing, then you don't need to worry about all this stuff. But trading options, those three things can make or break the same setup that we're both in from making. It'll be the difference between one of us profiting. Just having that difference between the knowing where the implied volatility is and me picking my right strikes and knowing the right expirations. So I kind of want you guys to understand that part is very important. If you guys don't know that stuff, I would highly recommend you guys go learn it. Google, great tool. Um, so let's go into my criteria. Somebody asked me when my, I made that video, it was quick and probably was some people got confused of what my criteria when I kept saying, what well, this didn't fit my criteria. So I'm gonna go over some slides using examples of what my criteria is. So first one we're going to go over to is a supply. What you guys see, this is how I find my green level. So here's a starting point. We want to see this move up. So at this point, there's still no levels here. We want to see the price move up and then come back to where our starting point is. So once the price came right back down here, and we can see this part. So this part is very important. Sellers initiated the directional change. So I always want to see a red candle here sign signifying that sellers stepped in and that this level is a pretty important level when we do ever revisit it. So price came down. Now we have this level marked. Is that very simple to understand how I look for... You can use this any part of the the chart you want to see a price swing up and come back to a pretty much the same price is that very basic everybody understand that part so yes the criteria part that i was always referring to in that video was sellers initiating the directional change that to me makes that a level a strong level why do i have it green i'll get into that after I just want you guys to first understand how I find this level. This is in my previous videos, supply and demand volume one. This is my supply level. So this would be at the top of my zone right here. So here is one example of what I don't fit, one that doesn't fit my criteria. Starting point came up, price came back to the starting point, but the sellers did not initiate the trend change. So this level here, I I most likely will not have that level there. So to me, that level most likely will get blasted right through. Um, it's not something that I can try to say, maybe if we don't break above that I could take puts on it or short it at that level for a reaction. Because as you can see right here, we just, we didn't even stop. Um, just continued right through it. It's not a real level for me. It's not a strong level for personally, for my strategy, my kind of strategy. <clears throat> so that's what I mean by didn't fit my criteria. So that is for a supply zone, finding that you want a green candle to be forced red by sellers. I want the high of the trend. So when you get a starting point and we come back to the price of the starting point, I want the high point of that trend reversal to be selling candle 
I want sellers to be the one that have the high point of that trend change. Is that very pretty pretty basic, pretty simple concept to grasp, right? Okay. Now we can do it vice versa. Starting point up here. Price comes all the way back. Here we have a buyer's initiating the trend change. So to me, this level is a very strong level. So I would definitely have this level marked out in case we come back to revisit that level. How's it going, Patrick? So that's very simple, vice versa. We want sellers initiating the trend change down. We want buyers initiating the trend change up. So again here, we have uh, one that did not fit the criteria. Came Price came down, came back up, but buyers weren't the ones that initiated it. And sellers, I'll get into more of the psychology part of this after, but I just want you guys to get this basic part without confusion how I just have these levels marked. So when you're looking for where I found a level, you know I'm looking for those criteria to be met. And then that's where you'll see my level. So now I'll, under I'll explain why I have it green for a supply level, which probably confuses a lot of people. But my reasoning for green is because I believe this level is stronger once we break above it. The reason I do that is because, yes, we could get a reaction and get a rejection. My trading style, what I like to see is these levels here, once we break above, flip the zone. So here I considered it as a, say a resistance. It is a resistance, it's a supply level. But once we break one of these, once all my criteria is met and we break above this level, this is a strong support level. At least for a few, I've never taken same, well, I can't say I'm never, but I rarely take the same trade at the same level more than once or twice. So it doesn't matter if we come back three times, I'm not going to take this and it could fail. But the first retest, very strong level. It will probably give you that reaction that you're looking for. And also in, on the initial, initial break and close above, it'll give you a reaction too. So you could get a trim off. And I'll get into that trading part of finding that entry. But again, breaking this key level, once all this criteria is met, this becomes a strong support, at least for a few reactions, few bounces. And you guys are going to notice this much more when you start marking out these levels that once we do break above the retest, maybe once, even twice, we'll, we'll gain some kind of reaction bounce when we break above. So that's why I have it green. And then red, this level right here, when we do break below it, the retest, it gets, it gets pretty nasty. Um, so this is where the break of demand and retest, once, once all this criteria is met and you do have this buying candle that initiated the trend change and we break below this candle, this becomes a strong resistance for at least a few reactions, just like when we break above supply. But again, I do not enter puts until we close below these levels and vice versa. I don't enter calls until we break above that supply. But I just know the higher probability trade will be and the more, and I'm, I'm the type of trader that likes continuation. I look for the bigger moves. So, these breaks on these levels will give you a much bigger, say, R and R for a trade. If you can locate where you want to enter on which levels that break, so this makes it just easier to kind of have your. You could just set up your trade plan, but just this is why I do have it red. Just keeps me knowing that where I would like to see the better. I could take a bounce here. It could happen a few times, um, but the better trade and higher probability trade has always been when it breaks and it comes back to retest or on that break. Now, I got an example to show you guys <clears throat> so we can go in over it. 
So here I'm going to be using up to, this will probably be, so I'm going to be using just save. This is our starting point right here. Coming down. So this level is still not here. This level is still not here. <clears throat> so we'll just kind of go over this. Starting here, comes down, comes back up. The first level that we get then will be this level right here. Met all the criteria, so we mark this level. Comes back up here. Then we come back down here. So now we've done, say, starting point here, up here, come back. Now we can get this level, and it's met the criteria. It's got sellers that initiated that push down. So now we have this level here. So we're going to go into, so once the candle comes down here, this, I believe, candle was in August 29. And now you have this daily level here and this daily level here. So now you have your level set here. You're coming into August 29 trading session. You have these levels. This is just on the daily time frame. Daily time frame is my favorite levels to play. Uh, so this example is just going over a daily level, setting the, the high and the low, the supply. And so now you're just waiting for, because this is where price finished. So now you're waiting for two days for one of these levels to break. Obviously, we see here it was a, the supply that broke. So I kind of went into more of an example. So now the five minutes. So this is on August 29. Coming into the session, you can see price was just floating after that first green candle day. So now we're getting closer to the top of this daily. So here we're coming into the session. <clears throat> this is just the criteria for my personal preference of how I trade. So you can see we get a reaction first touch on that daily level. That was around 10, 10 o'clock, 10.15. So we come down, it rejects right off that level. So me, I always, that's why I do not like to front run it. See here, front running it will get you in a drawdown. You could have your convictions an hourly level below. You could have added <clears throat> whatever the case may be. But personally on a daily level, if I come into that trading day, and I, my plan is to play that level on a break above. I'm waiting for that candle close. So here you can see the candle had a strong closed above the level, more than five cents, five, 10 cents. It breaks above. You enter off of that candle close, you will enter here. Your stop will be very basic, very simple. Just follow it, five, whatever you use to enter, so here, you were waiting for the five minute. This is what I wait for. Five minute personal preference to close above the level. That is going to be my criteria to stop me and invalidate my trade. So that same level, I'll have my stop set there. And then as you can see, we'll continue back going up. Never got stopped out. So that's just using a daily level. Here is the next. How do I find the price target? So here you can see we got that. We got that area, that range that we wanted. So now when you're trying to find levels for, so I just did it the upside level because we know it broke above. So now if you're trying to find a PT for above, you can find your daily levels or the hourly levels. I always do both. So say coming into the August 29, you have both of these ranges. I should have done one for below, <clears throat> but just for this example, the one above, you can see here, the trend never changed. So I don't really have a supply here. Or even you do have one up here, but that this is SPY, uh, you're not gonna hold a zero DT or even a one DT. If you're swinging, you'll have those price targets up there. You can find higher levels. But for me, I just look for one that was within SPY's average daily move. So 446 to 450. You can see here, I marked that trend. This one met all the criteria, supply zone, the trend change with, with the selling candle. So here, as you can see, you got your price target. You know this is a daily level, so you don't have to take zero DTEs to target here. It's nice when zero DTEs do get the next daily level, but realistically, daily levels might take one day to get there. They do hold back the move. As you can see here, we continued, you would have trimmed wherever you felt comfortable. You could even, 
once uh, I'll show you in the interactive part of this webinar about finding and doing the same process with your hourly. We do have hourly price targets. I bet you would mirror exactly where it's stalled out. Every part that is stalled out, we probably have an hourly level and you could trim along the way. If you have a longer expiration, you can hold for that final price target. As you can see right towards that pre-market, end of the pre-market, it actually hit the price target. So, so <clears throat> this uh, example is so clean. I remember this day very well. It was so nice. Um, it's never going to always be like this. There are times where five-minute candle close might be too much of a loss. So coming into the trade, if you know you're sizing heavy for that position, there's times that I do do that. And I'll stop out before the five-minute close. And it'll be because I'm too heavy. I'm expecting an instant move. So as if... Right here, we got that rejection the first time. Second time, we get a candle close above. I'm going to be in pretty heavy on this one. But I'm going to also know that I might not want to hold the whole five-minute candle close um, because we've already gotten what I wanted to see. The first test, the second test, now closed above. So I'll, you're going to have to use your position sizing to kind of guide you on what your stop is going to be on. If you're going to wait the whole candle close, that's if you're going to be sized for that. Most times it does happen. It wicks. What you could do is, which I always, you guys probably notice is I'll get stopped out my first time. But if we go back right now within the next few minutes or whatever, the next few candles, if we go back and close back above, I'm going in there. Same trade. I'll do it at least twice. And then the second time, because I'm not entering a trade, first of all, that will make me only scalp. I'm looking for a move that's going to give me a decent return on R&R. &R. So I can, just based off my R&R &R on the trade, it'll tell me how many times I can try the trade, at least more than once. We can go over that. Uh, so that's the part of the interactive part. I'm going to show you guys what I do coming in pre-market. What do I look for? And then how do I set my levels and then my game plan. So when I do have my post, when I do post my game plan, you guys are with me 100% of the way. If you guys see me not very interactive, you guys know what I'm looking for and you haven't gotten it yet. So then I will continue, um, but I'll have that part. I'll have this all, the slides even posted. How do you determine R&R &R when contract movement? Is it always one-to-one -one with underlying? Is that a factor? In contract movement, uh, well, I don't know about you. I haven't seen them hold a two three dollar move without making the contracts uh well on spy anyways without giving me some kind of return on the contract so most of my pts on spy are within over a dollar this i don't see pt over a dollar I and you'll see sometimes i'm just sitting idle or i'm waiting for the end of the day where now the contracts are so towards the end of the day, I'll take a dollar move on SPY. Yeah, later on in the day, I'll take a dollar. So that's where my trade setups get more. Let's just say I'll, I'll start looking for a, a closer price target trade. Once contracts are cheaper, but during the beginning of the session, I'm looking for that bigger price targets the setups that allow price to move without any resistance towards that price target. And you can see it. When you start marking out these levels, you'll start to be able to start seeing like even whatever way you guys chart, there's areas where price just doesn't have many levels between each other. Those are my favorite areas to take a trade at. Sometimes it doesn't always pop up, but I try to hunt those trades the most.
how do I avoid chop? Uh, very simple. So I'm going to show you how I avoid it today. So first, I'll go over quickly how I identify those levels. So coming in pre-market, I look at the daily time frame. Um, we're in a pretty easy trend to see right now, right? Um, we're just going straight up. So what I'm looking for is, you remember how I was saying this? Th these are what I'm looking for. So you can see here and here, you can see it. Like this, this couldn't have been a much cleaner trend move up. And honestly, just waiting for this break. And you can see it every time we break this candle, what's happening? We get a huge move every time we break one of these candles. You can see it. You can honestly don't have to trade any other level, but the daily level breaks downside or upside. You find this level and then look, I'll go into price action. Just make it very simple. So here pre-market, this is data drop. Look at this right above this candle, first candle. No close, you're like, okay, um, this is pretty pretty extended. You could wait for the retest. Um, me personally, I was already in it, but you could wait for the retest. So this is coming into this session, broke above. You can enter. Here's your stop. This is a candle closed at 514.69. This is 514.2. You could just so here would be final price target. Actually, no, we didn't have that level yet. So you'd have to go back. But even on the retest here, this is the part that would have made you get swept. So here's the area that you're talking about. Like I said, I don't like to take same trade more than once. So once we came back down here, I would have waited patiently for the retest, closed above. If we got stopped out here, depending if I've already profited here and I'm taking this trade, I'd probably try this one more time. Because I'd be stopped out. So here I enter on this close, get stopped out on this candle close right here. Come back. I would retry it, but this stop would be tighter. So you can see we continued. Yeah, 5150 was that area right there. Again, coming into the session, you can see this daily level. Because we broke above here, coming back. It gave us a reaction, but again, one, two, three, I'm already not, in, I'm not even liking this area no more. So it's hard to kind of put this in context without you guys knowing where I found the level. So here's starting point. So here we'll go here, here, starting point. So this one has, this is where everybody's expecting us to pull back to. And you can kind of see why, right? After we got this break, we never really got a real retest back to this level. So that's why everyone's still expecting a huge move down. Um, so the other side of the level would be the demand. So here, as you can see, we held this area, we pushed up. So here, this is where I would mark red. We never came down to it. And then I don't even have another one. <clears throat> this is one right now. We finally got one that was made and that's 508. So you guys see, this is, I do it very quickly, but you guys will start to be able to recognize these higher lows very quickly. So it was starting price here. So you can say here, starting price came up, came back down, we pushed up. Once we came back up to here, you can mark this level. That was on, yeah. So after this candle here, we got that sell off on, I think on Friday and I did my weekly watch list. I said, I wanted to get a retest here. A break above 514 was going to help me get that. So we did get that set up for our from our weekly watch list early in the session. And I said, now would be the main. So now that we got a good close above, 514.2 breaking. So now what would happen? Where do you think price will gravitate if we break below this level here? It doesn't mean that this is a strong resistance. So we could bounce around in this area. The stronger move will be waiting for this 508 to break to be really. But price will gravitate down here. 
yes, we can mark hourly. But if we're going daily to daily level and these sellers, this strong support fails, most likely we're going to go retest the next strong support, which is will be down by 510. So today we closed right above 51.65 SPX daily. Did we close above 65? I, the problem about SPX, I did not, I think the exposure was low the last few days. So I'm actually kind of, me and SPX are, SPX are not in great terms right now. <laughs> they are bouncing mid-air, rejecting mid-air. They have no real exposure levels. Right now it's QQQ with all the exposure. And I believe today 517 had over a billion dollars notional on SPY. So SPY and QQQ are just running the game right now. So yeah, NQ. NQ and QQQ, in my opinion, already failed their strong. So here we can go over it. I'll show you guys quickly. Same principles, we'll do it with QQQ and then you guys can explain to me what you're seeing once we draw out these levels. So here, same thing. It's a smaller level, but still a support area. So we got so here, this is why we've been chopping in this area, because you can see how many of these strong supports QQQ built up, coming back above. So this whole area is just any any given moment, we can have buyers just step in. So yeah, QQQ actually did get a good strong close. They held, most likely could get a 446 test. Forgot all time line. And Q not so much or QQQ, but with spy, I do like the hourlies as well. Same principle. So you asked what do I use? When do I get rid of those levels? I really don't get rid of the daily levels anymore. These levels stay pretty true because um if we come back down here. I'm probably not going to take another bounce here because if we've already bounced it, depending on how many times we test this level, but I do want to confirm that we lost that level before entering a position against it. Hourlies change pretty constant for me. So here, <clears throat> just looking at today's session, Today, I, I knew to just wait it out because we were, so look, coming into the session, somebody asked, how did I know not to get chopped out today? We got this big move up here. We came back down. We had this uh, coming. We had all the way up here, right? We closed. For me personally, I was expecting us to just go retest 514.2. But... I did not want to take calls until we broke above here. We were not even that far away. So R and R for me, because I checked the exposure levels, 520 was the next level above here. Even though we don't have a level up here, exposure level, notional wise, the next contract strike would have been 520. That will make me wait. I'll be patient for that move. Instead of potentially getting grinded out, especially when I'm anticipating a move back down, so this would have been my confirmation to play. So once you get this break above a daily, most times you want to be already satisfied with the move. You want to capitalize on that day. You want to make sure that you're able to hold out for until, unless you got swings and then you're swinging calls for the next daily, you're most likely going to want to just hang out, wait till either we retest the daily, which they gave us that retest the same day. Um, or we break above the next daily and the next trade setup comes. But those days you want to capitalize. So today you could be like, yeah, I'm not interested for anything here. We didn't really get anything. And you're not stressing about, hey, I didn't, I sat in the computer for eight hours. 
you really don't even need to sat, sit in front of the computer. You could have marked your levels around within 20, 30 cents and went about your day. You know, two things can happen. So here we already got the retest. The next test, that's why I had my favorite short setup at break below here. Because the next test here, I'm not going to be very interested in bouncing it. I'm more likely wanting the break of it. And then here I'm going to be, so you can see here, this is the hourly. This is where we bounced on yesterday. So you can see how we bounced here as well. So we got these two bounces already on the daily and hourly out of the way. So me on a break below here, I'm looking to short this or take puts because if I look again, I don't think even this will hold up. You could wait all the way to 513.15, but that's over a dollar move here with a potential to pretty much go straight down. Because if you look, we don't have much. Doesn't meet the criteria. This one does, but it's been already so far away. So looking at just recent price action last few weeks, just uh, last week, between here, you can see how the moves have been clean, right? It's going to mirror the same price action. Like we're going to probably get the same type of movement as we got here if we break down here. I would trim here, safe trim. Only reason I would safe trim it here is they might give us that retest back to this level and then continue to move down. But these do give you a levels to at least watch out for. But the best setup to me was waiting. But it's a daily level. These are hourly levels, right? If we lose a daily level and it closes below, it's a good chance that we're going to get that reaction down to the next daily. Hourly levels only really stall the move. The move. They they don't they don't really ever guide the move. They'll just stall it, and then eventually break. Yes, I always, that's my actual whole strategy, Kate. Daily level entries is my favorite. Some days I'll force a trade. I don't like it, but I'll size, knowing that it's not a daily, I'll size way significantly less. Probably like 10% of my, my normal average position size. Just because I know it's not a daily level, I really do not like any hourly. Like the number one levels that I have the best R and R with is daily levels. You get a reaction. There's some people that do the strategy. I used to do this on the weekly, and I used to swing out a month out contract almost every time off of a weekly price target daily. Every time. Is that kind of easy for you guys to see how I? Come up with a game plan. So here, coming in pre-market, actually, this was pretty interesting. So here, pre-market, we made this level. It was very small. So you can already know what kind of reaction you're going to get. This is such a small trend change. You're not going to expect a big move on a break of it. But nonetheless, you did get some kind of levels in this area. Because if you look here, we don't have any levels, right? So I did have levels here. I was monitoring. Coming into pre-market, we've got that starting point here, down, up, buying initiated, and then vice versa, starting point here, up, coming back down, we got sellers initiating. So I had these levels all marked out coming into our session. As you can see, we really only got the break of the downside. So me, that's why I was more reluctant on the upside because we've already kind of established, even though it was a small, small range, we've already established that we're more leaning to the downside. So you could have played this level here. I'll show you on the five minute. So coming into the session. So here we got that five minute close. 
we could have entered right on this end of this candle close. Stop would be if we close back above. And you could have got that for a nice decent move in the morning. Right? Again, retest. You could have waited. Got a few reactions, but eventually we're going to break above. But the fact that we didn't continue down was, uh, again, here, same thing. We could have went in, never got stopped out. Once we closed the back above and we established position, could have waited for that break below, got in, stop would have been above, and you would have caught this whole move down. No problem, Nafta. I just want you guys to kind of understand my levels again and how I look for entries based off of these levels. So again, this was would have been a forced, today would have been a forced trade, but you could have had that pre-market levels all set. And then you could have just played that right off the open and then waited a bit, waited to see if, because you're not going to take the same trades. You could have tried it one more time. So close, uh, we close, we close. This close above and then coming back, breaking below. So this is when you guys know I do not look for, if you guys know uh, whoever does trade with me here, <clears throat> um, know when, say we do reclaim a level, I still won't take the trade that direction because it's because I'll probably wait for us to break above here. You'll see me waiting for that supply level to break above and we make that into a strong support. Even though we reclaim this level, it's a riskier trade. Yes, you can get that early IV boost on your contracts, but there's other days where it'll do this and just chop you out. Yes, so you need to go on... Um... For your daily levels, you do need 16 hours because I have all, uh, I chart every, every, uh, time frame with, uh, after hours data and pre-market data. So the way you get around using that with TOS candles, um, you do need to set it on 16 hour time frame to get the same daily levels as me. Hourly levels should be identical. And that's about the only difference. All right. So this part of the webinar is going to be questions. I'm going to try to go through as much questions as I can. No. So Patrick, I'm anticipating the break. Um, if we go back and look at it, I think today was a pretty much close enough bounce. We got 514.49. I definitely will not take it again. And we just made a new level too. So we got this one now. That's nice. They're building strong resistances. So you can see they could you'll start to notice what they're doing. So here they're building strong resistances. As you've seen it on QQQ, they were building strong supports. So here what will happen is you don't want price to fall down because it's going to be a hard way, hard climb back up. If you look, we've tested everything here. You're right. Today should have been a 514.2 bounce. <clears throat> Honestly, my, you'll notice my watch list. I do say my favorite setup to go short or, or to go to go long at a level. If it invalidates, I say this a lot. I personally do take these trades. Um, they're riskier, but I do take them because I do know if they don't want me into that position, most likely we're going to revisit the old level. So if they don't let you get a close below here, most times what happens is higher probability, we're probably going to go back to retest this level. So if we break this level here and we do not break below here, say we get wicked and we come right back up, this is your price target up here. So you'll see right now what I'll do is I'll still keep this level here, but we've actually went through it enough time. So I'll probably keep the level up there, but do I want to put a position on here? No, I don't want to put on a position here. Do I want to put on a position if we break above here? Yes. Why? Because we haven't broken above. 
Does that make sense to you, Brandon? But I still want this level here to give me a sense of um kind of a sense of direction that okay, yeah, hey, I can get ready. They're building a support. I'm gonna wait, get my contracts ready, I'm gonna get my calls ready. This is 518. I do have 520 as a price target. I'm gonna get uh 519 calls ready. I'm gonna watch. I'll probably get 519. I'll probably get some 518, but 519s. And I'll watch for this break and my price target is here. Yes, yeah, so I do implement previous days lows and highs only if they meet my criteria. Why would you play 517 break and not wait for 518 confidence? I'm saying if personally I would wait 518. I'm done but now that we've actually swept down below it's actually pretty you'll get a good they're not holding back we're not going to get swept here if they break this level 517.44 we're going straight to 518.23 but now they have an area where they can confluence and just bounce us between this these two areas right they can reject us hold here maybe dip here but let's just say where we might be in store but actually we got data tomorrow so it'll be interesting to see if we free market <clears throat> but the main point of that was how I do still keep this level but I won't enter on this level because of the trade already happened this level to me is not really a strong level at all it's not where I want to risk my money Remember, these levels are meant for just to guide you and to tell you where you want to put your risk on. So you decide when you make your levels and you find your levels, you can look at the map, look at the chart, I mean, and you can choose where you see any risk reward to put on a trade. You want to A, see a smooth candle price action between zones. not a coincidence we got a huge move down here and we got this move here this is such a nice setup and that's what i was talking about on the weekly watch list when i was when we came all the way down here we closed right here i said if we close back above here i like this setup to come come back and retest up in this area because i just seen how the price action moved in this area you can choose it. And then if you go back, like there's certain areas that just chop. Well, we're in all time highs area, but um, previously, if we go back down, you'll know. So here, this area right here, you can see us chopping. You can see it. But the break of this level, we'll probably get a gap down or a nice sell candle. That's what that exactly what would happen if we got a break of 508 and then we might get one good move here and then we're going to do this again we're going to chop so we'll probably chop again here and then they'll probably break us down or we'll push back up but we're going to get in one good move and then we're going to chop and consolidate price action mirrors each other so when you're finding your levels you find the levels that have the most cleanest price action between them. And you say, okay, here's my risk reward. I like this area. There's people that literally go on vacation and wait for price to go a thousand points away. Like that's not when we're at all time highs, but I mean, when we're lower, they would map out a couple hundred points away from where their levels of entries are. And then they would just go on vacation or do something else and then come back and trade only in that zone or in that range. I said it during March or February, like beginning of February, I believe. And I was noticing this pattern already. So we've been doing this forever. Like Here's the level. We break it. We flip this level and we go make a new level. We flip it. So it was right here, February, this area right here. Um, and I said, what we're doing right now is pretty much just making a supply and then flipping it. So 
stay true to it. Made a supply, flipped it. Made a supply, flipped it. Made the supply, we flipped it. Now we're in an area where, are we going to flip it? All I know is the trade is going to be very simple for me and I won't think about it. If I lose, I lose, but my execution is going to be very, very non methodical it'll be just quick easy relaxing if we break, break this all-time high i'm targeting this can't get simpler than that and then vice versa we'll know if the trend is changing i'll tell you right now we'll probably be late whoever wants to short up here once we break above go ahead i hope you you know success for you that's not my style but I'll wait for the break of this level right here. This one right here, 508.5. I'll miss, I'll miss all this. But I'll probably take some obviously some zero DTE trades for shorts, but that'll be after we break these hourly strong uh resistance previous demand levels. I'll probably take some shorts, but to really think that the trend hasn't changed and we're not still making supply and breaking it, I would have to see 508 break. And then after that, the retest to confirm it and then break below 504. And then maybe we'll be in a much bigger range where it looks like this now. The range actually might turn into this. So now I'll be prepared for us to go back up and break that. Today's candle right here. Oh, you're right. Why isn't it showing it for me? Oh, there you go. Twenty twenty one, I bought calls a lot. I didn't know what I was doing most of the time in options. Um, but this is, I can go back and show you twenty twenty one. This is pretty much what they were doing. They were making supply, breaking it, flipping it. Nothing too, too crazy about it. It's been. It's like a tried, true, bull run setup. So again, we, this is why I didn't want to take calls. Why would I want to take calls here when I know what the risk reward is by just waiting? Like I could scalp the calls today. I could have did all that, but risk reward is I need to wait for that break. And then the reward is a day of being patient, not making any money or two days of being patient. That break alone with proper position sizing, as much as I, I size heavier for these daily breaks, um, it'll make up for all those missed days of non-trading. An hourly level, I get it. But the daily level break, sitting on your hands for two days, three days, Just playing this daily level breaks and will make it more than worth it for the week. It only takes one, two good trades a week if you size properly. If you're trading much lighter, I understand, then you want to practice. You could play the hourly and you'll get at least one trade a day. One good setup. So what I do with my zero DTEs on the daily levels, because uh, zero DTEs are very prone to getting IV crushed. I'll have an hourly target very close either with NQ or SPY or ES or SPX. I'll have a price target that is somewhere. So I'll make sure I'm not entering. So most of the time you're going to notice too, when you have those other tickers, when you're marking out your levels, the trade setups very much complement each other. There'll be a setup where you think it looks good on SPY, but NQ will have just a resistance or a level against your setup right there. But then if you just wait for the next setup above on SPY, then you'll see NQ or, or QQQ 
not have any levels there. So then you'll say, I'd rather wait for QQQ or NQ to clear that level. And then I'll look to make sure I'm above my level on SPY and then I'll enter my trade. So that's the more part, advanced part of using other confluences. But you'll start noticing when you're charting out these levels, how these setups all align and where the best levels risk reward is. Yeah, you don't want to, so here, like this daily level break here, I'm pretty sure it's going to line up. If I look at QQQ, it's going to line up with, uh, it should line up with this 446 break. And if it doesn't, that's even better for me. If we are sitting somewhere here and we're breaking above on SPY all-time high and we're just coming back above here, so here, a, uh, this is on the hourly, so say I got this high here. So this is how you know some areas you don't want to be involved in. When it's bunched up like this, you don't want to be involved in this area. You want to wait for 4.48 4, 4. 4. 4. to clear. So say we clear above 4.48 4. 4. 4. 4. on NQ. I know the next major resistance, this gap down here, maybe we'll have one resistance reaction here. So four, four, five. So I know from bouncing a daily level, my price target, final target will be up here, but I do know that we could bounce around in here and then finally get price target. But if SPY is already breaking all time highs and we're already above here, actually it'd even be better if SPY if QQ just sits right above here and we break all time high. This will be a trim spot. This will be a confluence level to trim. This will tell me that, hey, SPY doesn't have real any real resistances. Gamma is telling us uh, 520. We don't have any real resistances on, on QQQ and NQ. All systems will go. I can get this for at least 15, 20 points. So what I will look for is 100% trade most times on my SPX0 DTEs. Or I'll look for 520 or I'll look for up here trimming around this area here. So if the 100% comes first or these levels come first, that's how I'll pick my, my trimming style for zero DTEs. But most times I will not just trim my, my contracts. If my trade is set up and I'm good for in and I haven't been invalidated, I need a price target to trim. So my default one is 100%. And then the other ones are price targets, closest levels. How do you scale, how do you scale your trend? That's, so that's exactly what I was just explaining, Shield. Um, default 100%. Price targets always supersedes 100%. But if I have a good enough trade where I have no room, I kind of pick the right setup. And there is area is in the chart where you'll find that where you'll have enough room, nothing impeding. You can get to your price target. Maybe it stalls a little bit, but we haven't got there and we're not invalidated. I'll wait for that price target or hundred percent and trim there. Four, four, two. Do you have that level? So this is the next big one I see. Um, Four four two. See gaps. Uh, I don't think we have enough time for gaps. Um, give you a basic one. It'll be in the recording. But I treat the gaps the same way I treat my criteria. So you see this red candle, and then we gap down. To me, that's a supply. But I only mark the bottom of that. So the candle closes below. I mean, uh, the level, that is a support once we climb above it, just like right here. But these areas, I just tend to not really like take position inside of it, but I just know above, there's times that we'll get the gap and it'll be here, like this one. This one is a strong resistance. So this, this gap fill reject, 
would have probably been see a probably a better. Well, we'll see when we get back up here. But this is probably a strong resistance compared to here. This would probably be a, a stronger bounce. We kind of rejected it once, but you see how we kind of held it, continued, came down on this wick, pumped right back up. But that's for you guys just to go back on the recording. I don't want to touch too much on that. What makes you get into a trade above or below a daily for a candle close versus at a candle close? Uh, so CL, again, that's confluences. But you got to be, it's risky. You got to size for it, right? Because you'll know right away if it's invalidated or validated because you won't give yourself too much time. Um, but we've been seeing QQQ and SPY diverge a lot and SPX diverge a lot. So you do want to be more cautious with it. The better setups are when they're moving in sync. But the only thing that would make me get into a trade off the SPY level before a SPY level is broken above would be a NQ or QQQ level already breaking above. And vice versa. If I see QQQ start failing some some of these strong demands or strong uh, previous supply levels, I'm going to look to get out of my, if I was in calls, I'm going to look to start finding my my stops on those. And then vice versa, if I'm in puts and I start seeing QQQ start breaking above, I'm going to be like, okay. Got to put tight stops on uh, SPY. Yes. Well, not only that, so there's two two criteria that make me wait an extra five-minute candle. A strong move. So if we start to get a strong move towards that level, most times we could get, like here, a strong move. We got a candle close here. I bet you I'm five minute. And then, oh, this is on the after hour, but we'll get a sweep. So if it's a strong enough move, depending on how, like, if we just hulked right through a couple of these resistance levels, like, and we get up to here. So if we just start going all the way up here to this, and we don't even stall anywhere between here and there. I'm going to wait an extra five minute candle. Why? Because I know where my price target is. If I could wait another five minute candle and if they want to start pulling it back, most times they do risk reward would have been just waiting it out. Cause what happens is if they just next candle run us all the way up here then I'll just do the same principle, I'll wait until one of the candles slow down and then I get my candle and my entry. But I won't chase too much. If I do, I'll size way less. And then the moment it closes back below, I'll be out. But again, that's the only that's the main criteria. A strong move towards that level will make me uh, wait an extra candle. And you'll see it again here. Strong move. Pretty much came back and swept it. <clears throat> So here, I kind of already did my levels. If you look at this chart, me looking at this chart, my favorite setup for upside would be see, this is so far away. I'd already erased this level. So here, we got that trend move. So here, this is the most important part of my pre-market analysis. I look at the, the price gaps between levels. And then I'll be like, okay, do I want to know, do I want to enter a trade here? So here, 441 to 443, and then 443 to 444 area. And then if you look, we go up, we got 444 to 445. And then we look, we got 445 to so. The price targets are getting tighter. So pre-market analysis say this was in the pre-market. <clears throat> We're coming into here. And then downside, I'd find my downside levels. Um,
I actually like the break of this 439 level a lot, but not this area. You can see why I don't like this area break. Because there's a lot of fakes that happen right here. No continuation. So then when I come into the session, <clears throat> again, price target wise, this is 440 break to 439. That's less. That's just a dollar. And then we got 439.14 to 437.33. <clears throat> so for I would come in pre-market and I would mark out a break above 441.88, five minute close. I like to go long or buy calls. Break below 439.14, look to take puts or short. Do you see how I just came up with that game plan? I picked my risk reward areas. I pick, I know my price targets are going to be. And I just have that, that plan and I just execute it. And then guess what happens when we just sit in between this area right here? When we come towards two o'clock, I'll look to take a trade. But then I'll be using not my levels. My level is now bonus. So if we're just sitting in this area, and then my levels are not even touched, so that's all bonus, right? <clears throat> now I can focus on these levels, the smaller levels. So then I'll come in two o'clock. I'll look. I'll be like, okay, where are we sitting? Hmm. All right, we're sitting right in here, and we've just been zigzagging the whole day. Now I can say, all right, my level still hasn't been tested. But instead of waiting for the downside break of here, I'm going to take the downside break here of 444.59. I'm going to size less. But I'll still, I'll even have to size less on my break because I know we get such a big move on my break at the, uh, my level at the end of the day that I could size less than what I would have sized earlier in the day because the contracts would have, are going to move aggressive and I'll get a good move up. But this move down here, I'm sized light because they could chop us here and it's not such a big move anyways. So that's the positioning part of trading, knowing your setups, knowing the time decay. Back to that first slide where I showed you guys, <clears throat> time decay is very important to know. It will guide you with your position sizing. So knowing your option expiry towards the end of the day, that'll help you with your position sizing and your setups. But that's pretty much exactly, I'll have my coffee, I'll come, I'll do my levels, I'll scan the levels. And then my favorite part is right here. I don't even look at the candles. I'll just go here and I'll be like, hmm, this is a support. Okay, if we break above, strong support, strong support, break above, strong support. Hmm. So here, what I would I would know, okay, if we break above here, this is not really a strong support. So do I want to make this as my my setup to go long? Uh, no. And oh, we got a daily level above. All right. So price could be sitting here, and some people would be like, okay, you're just gonna make your level that far away. But to me, this is not a strong support. I'll, I'll stay patient for here. If we're going to keep going up, I'll catch the move eventually. Um, so here is where I'll put my risk on. And then break below here. Same thing, right? It's not a strong resistance, but I'll, I'll trade it. If I'm too, knowing that I'm too far away from any strong, we don't have any strong resistances, by the way. Um, most times, especially daily, we're too far away from any. So you're going to have to be much more non-picky for put entries so put entries right now are a break of strong supports over to the next level can bounce us so strike price i'm a day and where you see price going yes a hundred percent brett hundred and thousand percent that will make you that will change your game alone taking the same setups but just knowing that important part and picking that right strike, you're going to see your IV boost because then, A, you're going to get that trim level. You're going to get your trim earlier than a lot of people get their trim that are further out the money. 
So now you're able to trim out and hold for the bigger move and not get shaked out, which happens to a lot of people. So now you get your trim, now you're hanging out, you're chilling, and now you're even to catch. So now when it does do the shake out part, it's only back to your entry. And now you can catch the next move and the next IV ramp on your contracts. Again, these are all just levels. They don't mean nothing until you put risk on them, right? So you choose where you want to put your risk. I just try to tell you guys how I see the charts. So these levels are strong supports once we break above. But does that mean we get a huge move? No, this one does. This one might not. This one not might not. But gives you guys at least ideas. And then also helps you hold winners longer, right? So here we break above this level. I'm holding for this price target. If I can get 100% trim and not care about it, I know if we don't break above here, we'll probably come back to retest here. My stop can be here. If I have free runners, that's where most times I'll 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 stair step the whole winning trade. My my runners, so I'll walk guys through my letting my runners run. <clears throat> I'll stair step this whole process. So we come here, a break above. I'll take my trim right at this price target or hundred percent. My stop will stay here until we break above. If we don't break above, I'm anticipating us to come back here. My stop is still the same place just because I know we can do a retest. It happens a lot. We know this. And then they can do a huge move after, right? I've already secured most of my money out of the trade. My back at break even or back at stop uh, right at the entry until we move to progress to the next price target. So once we progress past the next first prog uh, price target, <clears throat> that's when I'll move my stop. I'll move it somewhere in the middle. I don't want price to, to come all the way back down. So I'll put it right here. As we keep going higher, I'll move my stop mentally at the next, at where my trim level is. So once we get this trim level, I'll trim again. That's where I get my second area trim. And now my stop's tighter because now the contracts are, they're not sitting at $4, $5, or sitting at $10, right? So now I'm much tighter on the stop. I'll let it come back down halfway or whatever. And then I'll continue it, same thing, over, over until it gets stopped. There's days where we've seen it, where this happens, just keeps going. Where have you seen, why do you get out? If you're following that kind of, that has helped me hold runners so much longer. I've had position sizes of over 10, 15 contracts, and then two contracts make the same amount of my first five, six contracts combined. I've had one, one time do almost at least seven, eight contracts trims. If the price, you know, there's going to, you give yourself room to, to let the price sequence continue. You'll be okay. If it gets stopped here, then you're, you're good. You've already secured what you want to do on your first price target though. So say if you have, let's just say hypothetical 10 contracts and you get your first price target here, ideally you want to take out six to seven contracts. Or it just depends on what your, your final price target is. So me, I always come into a game plan here. These are hourly levels. The end goal is daily, but we know realistically it doesn't always happen. You got to check IV that day. Some days, you know, we got data days. Okay, my targets can be a lot bigger, but... <clears throat> you're going to want to have a final price target in your head. So if I'm entering this trade here, I'm going to say I want to get to strong resistance. That's where I'll probably have most of everything like tight stop on my runner runner right there, but I'll stair step trim here for at least seven, eight contracts out of the 10. And then I, I'll just let two just keep going. Then here, another one. Then I have one more left and that'll be up here, tight stops. That's how I would do with 10 contracts. But I can let this price happen because up here, I'm already trimming about 70% of my, my position. Hopefully there are hundred percent. So if you're 70% of your position and they're all over hundred percent, then yeah, those three contracts are gonna be pretty much, won't even make a dent on your, 
your PL. What they will do though, if you do let them run, they will gain a lot on your PL. But losing them won't do anything. Like from what you started with in the beginning of the trade, and then your trim of 70%, over 100% of each of those contracts, those three contracts, I'm telling you from where you started, you're not going to see much of a difference if it comes back and stops you out below that level. When you will see the difference on those three contracts is if you come back all the way up here and now you're five to 10 points in the money. And if you, I'm speaking SPX terms, but once they get into them, that deep into the money, now we're looking at each contract from when your trim here will be about six, $7 to here being about $16, and then here being one contract about $25, $30. Huge difference, right? Just letting your runners run. You get seven here at seven, if you can do the math, and one here at like three, at 30. You're almost one position makes up for the same amount. I do appreciate you guys for taking the time today. I hope I did bring some type of insight. You guys are awesome. I'll try to do more of these with you guys, um, especially if there's some new things that the market's forever evolving, never stop learning. I'm constantly learning. I'm adding more Greeks into my trading style. Spy probably make new all-time highs like it's been doing. Um, and then QQQ will be just right here. But appreciate you guys. There's no other questions. You guys enjoy your night. Peace.